Hi, this is your host Abdul Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Yuri Goldfeld, Senior Principal Software Engineer at Akamai. Yuri, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to host you here today. And there's so much to talk about, of course, open source project. And Akamai, as you know, you folks recently also upgraded your membership at CNCF. I was at the show. I talked to a lot of folks at Akamai as well there. So it a lot of interviews are coming up there. But before we talk about all those things, just quickly remind our viewers, what is Akamai all about in today's world? Because your roots go all the way security, CDN. But I want to hear from you, how do you see Akamai today? Akamai has been around since 1998, I think. And uh, it's uh, the world's biggest content delivery network. That's how we've been known over the years. Uh, nowadays, our biggest area of growth, from what I understand, is cloud-native compute. That's why we acquired uh, Linode a couple of years ago. Uh, so that's how I think about Alchemy. Cloud compute, security, and uh, content delivery. Now, as we earlier mentioned, you know, when it comes to contribution to open source, you folks announced Flow IPC. What is it? Flow IPC, I'm very excited about that because I was, uh, well, among other reasons, uh, I'm proud of it and I'm uh, a lead developer. Uh, Flow IPC is, mm, I've, I've checked this, yeah, so uh, Flow IPC is the first original Akamai open source project, or at least among them. Uh, so it's a middleware in C++ for C++ programmers. Uh, it is, well, as in the name, it's for IPC, which means inter-process communication. Uh, it's about 100 to 200,000 lines of code. Um, and essentially, it is for everyday C++ system programmers who want IPC to be easy and for it to be fast. Can you talk about what exactly is Flow IPC? What does it do? The best way to explain it, I think, is to show what is it about IPC, uh, what is it and why it's even difficult uh, or what the challenges are. And uh, I actually like this topic. Uh, I, can, I feel I can even explain it to a layperson, a complete layperson. It's pretty simple to understand, I think, uh, which is this. So what is IPC? IPC means you have essentially two threads of execution doing something at the same time because computers have multiple processor cores, so that's how software uh, runs these days. And you're doing something in one thread, and then you've got a piece of data, for example, a piece of this video that you're watching, right? Uh, and so this one thread is responsible for something, and then there's another thread that's responsible for something else, but you need to pass some data, for example, a piece of this video, uh, from one thread to another. So you sort of transmit it, you send it. Uh, and then the other thread receives it, and then immediately takes over and starts working on that piece of data. For example, it might send it over the network back to your browser, uh, and then you watch this stuff. So uh, that is IPC, uh, except that's between two threads, and normally one does it in, within one program, and it's very, very easy. Programmers do it all the time, very familiar with this. But the way operating systems are set up these days, uh, when these two threads are in different programs, uh, let's say a web server and some security server, let's say, uh, then uh, they are in different programs and then you still have to do the same operation. It's exactly the same thing. You're passing a piece of data from one to the other. So that's IPC, that's inter-process communication. Uh, and what's hard about it is that um, at the very least, uh, let's say you're passing along a whole gigabyte of data, right? In that case, the easiest way to do it is use an operating system technique, which will essentially take the gigabyte of data and copy it into the operating system on one end, and then in the other program, copy it out of the operating system kernel. Uh, so that is simply put slow. So if you have a lot of these, a lot of this copying going on between program and another program and another program and another program, then when you click the video, it will just add that, and that's called latency, and nobody likes latency. So essentially, it's either IPC normally in C++ is either too annoying <laughs> or it is too slow. So Flow IPC makes it easy and fast by completely eliminating copying, essentially. Why you folks decided to open source it? I've thought about this actually recently a lot, uh, just thinking about the whole saga. 
It, I, I think it's straightforward. It's, uh, the story is like this, and I promise to keep it short. A few years ago, uh, I, had, I was given a task, which was split up this big, important uh, program application at Akamai. And uh, splitting it up uh, without slowing it down meant, among other things, that you can't be copying important data all the time because it would make it unacceptably slow. And at Akamai, every millisecond of latency is scrutinized and you just can't do it. I had to prove before anything that I'm not going to slow it down by splitting it up. So that's, uh, so I needed uh, some kind of IPC uh, and the things that were available out of the box were either too slow or too difficult. So it started out in the beginning as simply something for this specific task. But then we were designing it uh, from the very beginning, and it just felt like a general problem. It felt like something that was going to apply to a lot of people. Uh, so it's really as simple as that. Very early on, we were thinking about it, and we decided to make it general, not to apply to that program, but to apply to all applications, at least in that programming language. Uh, and that's uh, how it started. So that's how it was designed. But I was... I wouldn't say I was optimistic about it becoming open source because it takes a lot of resources to open source something. Uh, so I just sort of assumed, let's make it general, let's make it good, and then maybe someday. Uh, but when I announced it uh, within Akamai, uh, I have to say I was uh, delighted because the higher ups, you know, a couple of exec executives were immediately saying, uh, you should put it out there as open source. So uh, short answer is... We're just giving back. It's really as simple as that. Who is going to be the target audience for Flow IPC? That's another thing I enjoy about this project is that, uh, in my opinion, it's not really a niche thing. Uh, so as far as, I would say at least any developer uh, or architect uh, working on the server side uh, in systems development will find it helpful. Uh, so I would say that's the target audience is system developers and maybe architects. Uh, uh, but I, sh I, I should say in practice, this, uh, this guy in particular is in C++, so it is in the C++ world. Uh, although it would be interesting to expand it to Rust and other things. And if I'm not wrong, this is your first open source project, is that correct? This is, personally for me, my first open source project. And so far, you know, putting something in open source, what has been your experience? Because what I we do know about the proprietary world is that you may have internal QA teams, but mostly you don't hear back from peers or users, you know, the support teams. But in open source, when you put a code base out there, Suddenly, developers who you start seeing, you know, you know, feature requests, bug, you know, people start start helping you. So the experience is a bit different than property. So I want to hear how has been your experience by putting your first code in open source. We just uh, put it out like publicly on the Akamai website, I want to say three or four weeks ago. Uh, and actually it's been exciting because I did not know what to expect, this being my first uh, outing. Uh, one of the first things we did was we put it on Hacker News. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, you, uh, you probably, yeah, yeah that, you've heard about it. It is, uh, I didn't really, I admit I did not really know this. I feel like I will, I've been head down on this project for years, so I haven't been in the loop. But now I realize that Hacker News is a huge deal. So it was very exciting. Uh, we put it out there, and uh, you know there was like a huge amount of interest, uh, which was gratifying just on a personal level. Uh, you can probably Google Flow IPC Hacker News, and you will see a lot of comments, a lot of discussion. It was fascinating because people were sharing uh, uh, their own experiences or like, I tried to do this, how'd you do this? And then I got into uh, like some really constructive discussions where, you know, I feel like both sides learned something. Uh, even a competitor, I, I shouldn't say competitor, a uh, because we have no intention of like beating anyone down. This is completely for people's use, uh, whoever finds it useful. But uh, people, uh, there like there's a product called Ice Rx and Eventually, it seems the guys on that team found the Hacker News thread and they were asking, how did you do this? We did it like this. 
and so on and so forth. So uh, that's been a big part of the experience. Other than that, um, you know, we will see what happens. I would love to see contributions. I would love to see comments on the discussions board on GitHub for the project. I think it remains to be seen, but so that, that that's one big part of it. The other thing I wanted to mention, which was interesting, was um, um, the project is integrated. This is not a required piece of it. Uh, if you use Flow IPC, you don't have to use this part. But we integrate with something called Captain Proto, uh, uh, which is uh, I think spelled C A P N Proto. Uh, which is a fantastic serialization uh, library that's been a real inspiration. It's open source too. And so its creator, Kenton Varda, he contacted me and said, oh, this is really cool. Uh, and he now works at Cloudflare, which is an Akamai competitor. But then we video chatted and swapped, you know, uh, development uh, ideas. And, you know, so their a relationship was created there. So that was uh, fascinating for me especially given the, the two of us commercially are competitors, but that did not matter for this. If I'm not wrong, there may be other projects or even products that might offer the same kind of, you know, functionality that Flow IPC offers. Can you talk about why people should look at it, why they should consider Flow IPC, what advantage it has over others? The biggest competitor, I would say, is not something that offers what Flow IPC offers, but rather solutions that operate at a different level that are very elegant and simple to use. So I, for me, the best example is Google RPC or gRPC. Uh, it can be used in a network fashion, it's easy to set up, it uses protocol buffers, which people are familiar with. Uh, the thing is, it's very easy to set up and it's going to work. So a lot of people do that. Um, and you can throw your data in some JSON and not worry about it. And things will work and you can get them up to get them into production very quickly, no problem. Uh, the issue is uh, then ultimately you might end up with videos loading a little sluggishly or just your system behaving with a lot of latency. Then you begin to optimize as an organization, and then you find that it's not easy because it's not one pain point. It's just the fact that this is how you're doing everything because it's so simple. It's so straightforward, and it's so elegant from a high-level architectural level. So uh, so in that sense, uh, something Flow IPC or something like Flow IPC is something that you can use to even speed up gRPC by removing the copying from that layer of it. Uh, so that's probably the main thing I would say as far as alternative approaches. Now, as far as um, existing things that might do what Flow IPC does, uh, that's definitely something I looked at uh, recently after finishing it especially. So back when I was, uh, I should say we were starting this project, there really was not anything that I could find that was generally reusable. So at the time there was nothing, but it seems like a couple of people got this, uh, some of the same ideas and worked on something similar. So the one that stands out to me is called Ice Oryx. Uh, and its focus is a little different, but it does some of the same things. Uh, it has its strengths. Uh, I would say Flow IPC compared to that, there's a couple of things it does arguably better. One is that it is probably easier to integrate. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a framework, uh, is how I look at it. It's something where you need to speed up this part, you need to do some IPC, you kind of just throw it in. It does not require a big overhaul uh, of how you set up your event loop and things of that nature. So I think that's one big strength. And the other thing is, it's a little uh, in the weeds, but uh, as far as I know, we are the first people to have taken a commercial grade memory allocator called JE malloc, which is used in Meta and FreeBSD and lots of big things. And we actually made it uh, integrated with shared memory instead of regular memory. Uh, and I think that's very interesting technically and that can enable intense use of shared memory, which enables things to be very fast uh, in a way that I have not seen elsewhere. So that is a technical strength for sure. Yuri, thank you so much for taking time out today. Talk about uh, your first open source project, Flow IPC, what problem it's solving for the developers. And thanks for all those great insights. And I will look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Uh, it was great. Great talking to you.